More news now, and a small armoured army personnel carrier has crashed into a fence in North Norfolk. It was on a training exercise from the Light Dragoons base in Saunton Morley when it thought a problem developed with the steering and the vehicle crashed off the road in Leatheringset. The family of a two-year-old girl from Hevingham in Norfolk are desperately trying to raise cash for life-saving surgery. Ella Grace Honeyman suffers from a condition which blocks the main blood vessels in her brain. She's due to have surgery in America in two weeks, but her parents still need to find £7,000. Alpha Patel reports. She's a two-year-old who's known more pain in her short lifetime than most adults will ever have to endure. On a daily basis, little Ella Grace Honeyman suffers debilitating headaches, vomiting and even seizures. Her mother, Laura, is now preparing herself for the worst. We don't like to think of losing either of our children, but obviously with Ella Grace, that risk is so much more greater. And it's just something that you you don't want to have to think about or deal with. Ella Grace has a rare condition called vein of Galen malformation, which affects the main blood vessels in her brain. She's already had three high-risk operations. We filmed her soon after her last one more than a year ago. Then doctors were hopeful they had obliterated the condition by injecting medical glue into the centre of her brain. But a few weeks ago, she took a turn for the worse. I don't want her to end up blind or not being able to speak because we haven't got her there in time, or worse. I don't want to lose her. Ella Grace is booked to have surgery in New York in two weeks' time. It will cost around £45,000, but her parents are struggling to fill the £7,000 shortfall. The surgery could take place in Britain, but they could face a wait. They are also keen for the surgeon who pioneered the operation to do it. I know it's a difficult time of year with Christmas and the current economic climate, but, you know, I want to make sure that we're all together as a family at Christmas. For now, the family are desperately hoping Ella Grace doesn't deteriorate and they can secure the vital cash they need to keep her alive. Alpha Patel, Anglia News, Hevingham in Norfolk. Love you. And if you would like to make a donation, you can visit the website. The address coming up on your screen there. It's www.lifeforellagrace, life for Ella Grace, one word, fund.co.uk. Now, a meeting is being held tonight over plans for a quarry in the Yare Valley, seven miles west of Norwich. Norfolk County Council has provisionally okayed the 50-acre site bordering the villages of Marlingford and Easton for gravel extraction. The landowner and French company Lafarge also want to build a concrete plant. We're objecting because uh, I think if the people of Marlingford had come to, had wanted to live next door to an industrial estate, they would have gone and lived next door to an industrial estate. We're having a, an industrial estate imposed upon us which will destroy the nature of the countryside here. The owners of Mistley Quay in Essex have given emergency services keys for a controversial fence along the waterside. The move follows complaints from coast guards impeded during a rescue last month. The fence has been the subject of a long-running row with locals. Well, on to football now and a mixed bag of results for our league sides at the weekend. Well, Ipswich and Peterborough failed to produce a goal in the championship. There were plenty of those and drama in the games involving Norwich and Colchester in League One. Here's Donovan Blake's report. He may not have been too animated this morning, but Norwich manager Paul Lambert was pleased to be involved in one of the most exciting games of a day. Mind you, he wasn't totally happy with the way the game panned out at Southampton, even though Norwich emerged with a hard-earned point, having come from behind twice, firstly after Chris Martin was failed in the Saints' box. Wes Houlihan's penalty was saved, but he was quickest to the rebound. Fraser Forster couldn't lay a glove on this extraordinary effort from David Connolly. But Southampton's lead was snuffed out 15 minutes minutes from the end by Stephen Hughes. It was a terrific game of football, but maybe from one point of view it was a bit, a bit open. And as I said at the time, since I'm down there by default, it's a tough place to go. Big crowd at their back, and uh, I thought we were we done really, really fine. Uncomfortable viewing for Colchester boss Aidy Boothroyd, a 2-2 draw for the second week running, but I told him his team were 2-0 up and cruising early in the second half. Then they lost Mark Tierney for a second bookable offence for kicking the ball away, and it's all changed. Oldham roared back to draw 2-2.
More league games in League One tomorrow, but our championship sides will have to wait until Saturday to resume their respective battles against relegation. No goals between them, with Ipswich boss Roy Keane left particularly frustrated. His team did everything but score against Sheffield Wednesday, who had Lee Grant to thank for his performance in goal. And also the offside flag, which ruled out Thomas Criskin's late effort. Frustration too for Mark Cooper, but the league's newest manager wasn't too downhearted after Peterborough's defeat at Sheffield United. George Boyd's second-half penalty miss, however, did cost them a possible share of the spoils. Donovan Blake, Anglia News. And Essex boy Ollie Muir survived a nervous weekend before reaching the last five in the X Factor. The singer from Whitton finished in the bottom two of the public vote after his rendition of George Michael's Fast Love on Saturday night. But he gathered himself to win last night's sing-off against the Irish twins John and Edward by three judges' votes to one. Now, a road at RAF Lakenheath in Suffolk has been renamed in honour of an American serviceman who died while serving with the Royal Marines in Afghanistan. Technical Sergeant Philip Myers was killed in April trying to defuse a bomb in Helmand province. This now from Martin Stew. Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. Coined by Winston Churchill, the phrase rings just as true for an American based in Suffolk who dedicated his life to the safety of others. Technical Sergeant Philip Myers was killed on the 4th of April whilst trying to defuse a bomb in Helmand province. Today at RAF Lakenheath, where he was based, his wife Amy was amongst those present to see a street renamed in his honour. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming. Not only was Sergeant Myers incredibly popular, he was incredibly good at his job. On the plaque, it mentions just a few of his awards. The Bronze Star with Valour and Oakleaf Cluster, the Purple Heart and the Air Force Combat Action Medal. The year before he died, he was even named the best engineer in the whole Air Force. A veteran of 80 combat missions, Sergeant Myers was the man who stepped forward when others were told to get back. The day he died, he was helping the British Royal Marines. It's important to remember his sacrifice, uh, not just for us now, but for all the generations and all the future airmen who will ever be working here. How sadly will he be missed? Very sadly. Uh, I think of Phil every day. A brave man and a loving father who will be remembered permanently. Martin Stew, Anglia News, Lake and Heath. Well, it's 18 minutes past six. You're watching Anglia tonight. And uh, it may be cold out, but here's something to warm you up. We call it the People's Millions. It's where ITV joins up with a big lottery fund to give you a say in which projects in our region get a big cash boost. And if you needed just a little reminder of what a difference that cash can make, just take a look at some of the scenes from last year. Yep, get ready to see that all again, because all this week we're going to be handing out more big checks to more local good causes. Actually, you'll be giving it away, because it's you who helps decide who gets the money. Two local projects will be vying for your votes. Both are given a great opportunity on the programme to showcase their work, and the winner will receive a grant of up to £50,000 to improve their community. Well, we will tell you how to vote in just a minute. But first, let's look at uh, both of tonight's projects. Yeah, it can make a real difference. The first is the Mow and Grow project in Lowestoft, who want to expand their gardening service for vulnerable people. The second comes from Elmswell, near Bury St Edmunds, where the locals want to create a community green space. <laughs> 